The B-52 Stratofortress has outlived most of the jets it once flew alongside. Now it's about to fly further and smarter thanks to a set of new engines from Rolls-Royce, the F-130. These aren't just upgrades, they're game changers. With better fuel burn, longer life, and drastically lower maintenance, the F-130s are reshaping what a strategic bomber can be. But here's the real story. The tech going into this old warbird could change the future of commercial aviation. So, what exactly is this new engine bringing to the table? Why did the Air Force wait so long to fix the B-52? And how can a 70-year-old jet still lead the way in modern aviation? To find all of this out, continue watching. The B-52 may look powerful on the tarmac, but underneath it has been limping along for decades. The current engines, the TF-33S, were first introduced in the early 1960s. These power plants were never meant to last into the 2020s, let alone fly into the 2050s. And now the consequences of pushing them this far are catching up fast. Maintenance costs have skyrocketed. The U.S. Air Force has been spending tens of millions each year just to keep the fleet in the air. Replacement parts of the TF-33S are hard to find and in some cases no longer manufactured. Technicians have had to rely on scavenging and rebuilding aging components using workarounds that haven't been standard since the Cold War. One example, cartridge starts. That's where explosive cartridges are used to start the engines manually. A backup method that belongs to another era but still sees use today. It's loud, unreliable, and highlights how outdated the system really is. On top of that, engine inefficiency has been a long-standing problem. The TF-33S burned far more fuel than modern engines, reducing operational range and adding serious logistic pressure. They are also significantly louder, which isn't just a problem for stealth. It's a red flag for international missions and sensitive deployments. But worst of all is the risk. These engines are beyond their design life. Every hour flown increases the odds of critical failure. And that's not acceptable when the B-52 still forms the backbone of a U.S. strategic bomber force. By the mid-2010s, it was clear replacing the TF-33S wasn't an upgrade. It was a matter of survival. The only question left was what would come next and whether the Air Force could modernize without disrupting the entire platform. When the U.S. Air Force awarded Rolls-Royce the contract to re-engine the B-52, the goal wasn't just to find a replacement. It was to transform the jet's core performance. The answer came in the form of the F-130, a military variant of the company's proven BR-725 engine. But this isn't a copper-paste job. The F-130 has been custom-built to fit the demands of a 60-year-old A-frame, while delivering modern-day performance. The difference starts with fuel efficiency. Compared to the aging TF-33 engines, the F-130 is expected to deliver up to 40% better fuel economy. That's not a marginal gain. It's a logistical game-changer. The improvement allows for extended range, fewer refueling emissions, and reduced operating costs over the long haul. Then there's reliability. Rolls-Royce designed the F-130 with significantly longer service life. That means fewer overhauls, more predictable maintenance cycles, and a massive reduction in downtime. For an aircraft expected to fly well into the 2050s, that level of durability isn't a bonus. It's essential. Thrust is another major upgrade. Each F-130 engine can generate 17,000 pounds of thrust compared to just 12,000 in the TF-33. That extra power doesn't just help with takeoff and climb. It improves payload capacity and high-altitude performance, especially when operating in hotter, more demanding environments. The first major systems test came at NASA's Stennis Space Center, where Rolls-Royce successfully ran a twin-engine pod. Two F-130s mounted together, mimicking the actual B-52 setup. It was a critical milestone showing the engine can function together as intended. Next up is altitude testing schedule for 2025 at the Arnold Engineering Development Complex. Those trials will simulate real-world flight conditions to verify how the engines perform in thin air and extreme temperature bands. The F-130 wasn't built for commercial airlines, but it might shape them anyway. While the engine is being developed specifically for the United States Air Force's B-52, the technology inside it has clear crossover potential. That's because the F-130 isn't starting from scratch. It's built on the same foundation as the BR-725, which itself is a member of the Pearl Engine family, a series already powering luxury business jets like the Gulfstream G-700. 
What makes the F-130 relevant to civilian aviation is a combination of power, size, and efficiency. It's compact enough to fit older military pylons, yet powerful enough to push out 17,000 pounds of thrust. And it does so while meeting modern emissions and noise standards, an increasingly important benchmark for commercial fleets. In terms of engineering, Rolls-Royce has had to innovate across several dimensions. The F-130 incorporates advanced materials that improve thermal efficiency and wear resistance. That translates to engines that can run hotter, last longer, and require fewer inspections, benefits any airline would want to see in their next narrow body or regional jet. Digital engine control systems are also key. The F-130 uses updated full-authority digital engine control known as FADEC to precisely manage fuel flow, optimize thrust settings, and support predictive maintenance. These systems are standard in new commercial aircraft, but adapting them for a legacy bomber platform pushed engineers to find new efficiencies that could easily feed back into civilian space. Then there's a long view. What Rolls-Royce learns here could directly influence the next generation of commercial turbofans. Lighter cores, quieter fans, more precise digital integration. These are all areas where military testing speeds up innovation. The F-130 is proving that modernization doesn't always have to start with clean sheet. Sometimes a military need can light the way for civilian progress. And in a time when airlines are looking for smarter, more cost-effective propulsion options, the lessons from the B-52's revival might end up powering a lot more than just bombers. Swapping engines on the B-52 is just one part of a much bigger plan. By the time the upgrade is complete, the aircraft won't just have new power plants, it'll have a new designation, B-52J. And to get there, the U.S. Air Force is executing one of the most complex modernization efforts in its history. Beyond the F-130 engines, the upgrade package includes a new active electronically scanned array radar, commonly referred to as AESA. This will give the B-52J a sharper view of the battle space with better targeting, tracking, and electronic warfare resistance. It's a major leap from the analog system still flying today. To support that, the bomber is getting a full digital backbone. That means updated mission computers, communication systems, and data links. These are the systems that will allow the aircraft to operate as part of the joint force network, sharing and receiving targeting data in real time. But modernization goes deeper. Just integrating the engines requires new pylons, wiring harnesses, and structural reinforcements across the wing. This isn't a plug-and-play project. The original design dates back to the 1950s, so every modification requires deep analysis to ensure safety and performance. Boeing and Rolls-Royce are relying on advanced digital modeling to solve those challenges. Digital twins and simulation tools are being used to predict stress points, test aerodynamics, and verify systems integration long before physical testing begins. It's a modern toolkit applied to a Cold War airframe. Despite that progress, the timeline has slipped. Initial operating capability for the B-52J was once expected by 2030. That's now moved to 2033. According to the Government Accountability Office, the delay was largely due to underestimating program complexity and costs, particularly in the wiring and integration phases. Still, the modernization is moving forward, and once complete, the B-52J will be more than just a re-engined bomber. It'll be a fully wake weapon system built to fly well into the 2050s. To integrate the F-130 engines, the Air Force needed more than new tech. It needed reliable production. That's why every unit is being built in Indianapolis at Rolls-Royce's largest facility in the United States. This plant has become the center of a massive manufacturing push. Over 600 engines will be produced here, supported by a $600 million investment to modernize the site. New automated systems, precision tooling, and high-performance testing bays are already online, built specifically to support the demands of the B-52J program. The result is direct job growth. Over 1,000 workers are expected to be employed at the facility, from engineers to machinists. But the impact doesn't stop in Indiana. The F-130 supply chain touches dozens of small and mid-sized American companies, many of which are already feeding parts and materials into the program. That means this isn't just defense spending. It's local economic reinforcement. Every engine that rolls off the line supports hundreds of American jobs, from raw material processing to final integration and testing. There's also a long-term layer here. 
These engines aren't built and done. They'll require decades of maintenance, performance tracking, and software upgrades, all of which will feed back into the same U.S. infrastructure that built them. That's decades of domestic sustainment work baked into a single program. Producing the F-130 in Indianapolis gives the Air Force tighter control over timelines and logistics. Lawmakers see it as a win for domestic industry, supporting high-skilled jobs and funneling defense money back into local economies. For Rolls-Royce, the project strengthens its position inside U.S. military procurement while also showcasing technology that could shape future commercial engines. This contract ties aerospace innovation directly to American labor, keeping advanced manufacturing rooted in cities that rely on it. Other countries are paying attention. What began as a U.S. Air Force engine upgrade has turned into a global proof of concept. If a bomber from the 1950s can stay relevant through targeted upgrades, what does that say about older transport jets, surveillance aircraft, or maritime patrol fleets around the world? At the heart of the interest is cost. Full replacement programs are expensive, politically sensitive, and often plagued by delays. Retrofitting offers a middle ground. Extend the aircraft's life, improve capability, and spend less in the process. For countries dealing with tight budgets or shifting defense priorities, the B-52J model is suddenly very relevant. There's also a strategic shift at play. Sustainability is becoming part of national security conversations. Instead of scrapping usable A-frames, the B-52J proves you can breathe new life into old platforms. Modern engines like the F-130 reduce emissions, extend range, and boost fuel efficiency. When paired with new radar, avionics, and mission systems, the aircraft becomes a completely different tool built on the bones of the original. The U.S. Air Force plans to fly the B-52J well into the 2050s. It will serve alongside the B-21 Raider, splitting missions between long-range endurance and stealth penetration. By upgrading instead of replacing, the Air Force maintains readiness without adding a full new fleet to the budget. That model, keep what works, improve what matters, is what other countries are now studying. Not because it sounds good, but because it saves time, money, and resources. The F-130 upgrade extends a B-52's life with better fuel economy, simpler maintenance, and reliable performance. It's a defense project, but the results are attracting attention far beyond the military. Engine makers, airlines, and foreign governments are paying close attention. The B-52J may have started in another era, but this next phase could change how aviation moves forward without always needing to start over. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the past, present, and future of aviation.